Texas and Oklahoma are Big 12 members no more, but uh, hey, pay no attention to the name of the conference. It could change anyway. But also, the Big 12 now has 16 teams, thanks to four newcomers, Arizona, Arizona State, Colorado, and Utah. Let's go ahead and bring in our boots on the ground reporter, national recruiting analyst, Blair Angulo. Hello, friend. So excited. He was in Vegas this week, so he comes bearing some uh, good nuggets from Big 12 media days. And Blair, any time Coach Prime speaks, we all listen. So let's start there. What do you take away from what he had to say in Vegas this week? I thought he was calm, cool, and collected like Coach Prime usually is. It was 117 degrees outside when he took the stage, but you couldn't really tell that he was phased by that heat. He, he, I, I was really interested to see and to hear what he would say about his offensive line. We've heard him before be very critical and maybe at times a bit too harsh considering all the coach speak that we hear from, from coaches, but he, he was very, I think, transparent about what to expect from that unit up front. They've had to obviously protect Shadur Sanders. They didn't do a good job of that last year. He thinks they've revamped. He thinks that they've gotten stronger and bigger up front. That was a big takeaway for me. The other thing is, is he's a very popular figure within the, the new conference. The new commissioner, uh, Brent Yormach, talked about how he, he's really excited to have him in there. Dion, in a way, echoed some of those sen sentiments and, and said he was the best commissioner in the sport. You had Gus Malzahn talk about how big of a fan he is of Coach Prime and, and the awareness and the attention that he's bringing to the Big 12 Conference. And, and I'm hopping into my Uber on the way to the airport, Emily, following day two of, of media days. And the Uber driver is like, is this where Coach Prime was? And he, he has no idea what the Big 12 is, but he knew who Coach Prime was. So that's kind of where we're at with the Big 12 and, and the impact that Deion Sanders could have. It's exactly why I led the segment by asking about it. I know a lot of people want to know what he had to say. And, of course, I'm sure he made a grand entrance into this new conference. Not the only newcomer, though. I listed off the four new teams headed to the Big 12 this year. Overall, just taking a vibe check here, how was their integration into the Big 12 conference at Media Days this week? I think it's going to go really, really well because these programs have been very competitive in the Pac-12. We're talking about Utah and the two Arizona schools, Arizona and Arizona State. Let's begin with the Utes. They are favored to win the Big 12, according to the media poll. They return a loaded roster, a lot of experience. Kyle Whittingham has already named his head coach in waiting and his defensive coordinator, Morgan Scally. And he said that the change in conference really, I think, refreshed him. Him and reinvigorated his interest in the sport. It's it's in a, in a way allowed him to hit the refresh button. I think they're going to be a, a very capable power that can step in right away and compete with some of the top top teams in the Big 12. And then the two Arizona schools, Arizona uh, first beginning coming in, having a really good roster with with T Mac, the the first round NFL uh, draft receiver that's being projected to go really high. Uh, you have Noah Fafita, the quarterback. Uh, who, who was really electrifying last year. They have a loaded roster for, for Brent Brennan, who really de deflected a lot of the praise that this team has garnered because he said he had nothing to do with it. He just took over for Jet Fish and is doing his own thing. And then Kenny Dillingham and ASU, I'm not sleeping on them, although they were picked to finish last in the Big 12. I think Dillingham has been pushing a lot of the right buttons with that roster, with that team. I, I think his offense is really explosive. We've always talked about the Big 12 putting up a lot of points. I'm expecting Dillingham to be able to keep up with a lot of these high-octane offenses. So I think all those three, along with Colorado, are going to draw a lot of attention this fall. We saw the new Big 12 members last year struggle a little bit out of the gate, but as you just laid out, uh, in anticipation for a little bit better transition for these new conference members. All right, unfortunately, a big storyline ahead into media days was an off-the-field incident with possibly the best player in the conference this year, Oklahoma State's Ollie Gordon. The running back was arrested on June 30th under suspicion of DUI. Now, Gordon, to his credit, showed up at media days, fielded the tough questions, but his head coach, Mike Gundy, made headlines for his comments saying he looked up the legal limit and said that he could have been guilty of that a thousand times. He later clarified his comments, posting this on X. My intended point today at Big 12 Media Days was that we are all guilty of making bad decisions. It was not a reference to something specific. Blair, you were there. What's your take on how all of this was handled? 
I'm a media member and, and I love good quotes. And sometimes we knock a coach for not giving us truthful answers or, or something that's good that we can use when we write about stories or we put out on tweets or we talk about on, on reports. He could have easily pointed to the press release statement, uh, which is very robotic usually and sometimes seems AI generated. So I really respect that he went out in front of the cameras and Ollie was there as well and they were answering questions. They could have easily said, no, I'm not going to speak on this. We're going to deflect this and, and and you can refer to the statement that we released. Uh, however, obviously, this is going to draw attention. Remember, Mike Gundy is is one of the guys that famously said, "Come after me," right? When 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 um, you know, back in the day when he was forty, I guess. Uh, but but I think that's that's the thing about this this whole process is that they are trying to be transparent. They are trying to to speak on things. And, and when a coach does try to open up. A little bit more and give you more than than maybe he would in a, in a statement then we can't completely bash what he was trying to say on the other side of things brent yormark uh brett yormark who you mentioned earlier uh said he is fully open for business reiterating an initial message now we have reports that potentially there's conversations between adding florida state and clemson in the future he talked about private equity everything we're probably not going to hear similar things when we um, hear from the commissioners of the SEC and the Big Ten in their media days in coming weeks. It's definitely different in the Big 12. So with all of that as a landscape, Blair, where do you see this maybe progressive and innovative approach featuring and fitting in to the future of college football? If I'm a fan of a Big 12 program, I am super excited that he is the commissioner because you can tell that he doesn't want to be left behind. He's at the forefront of, of, of a lot of conversations, of a lot of innovation, of a lot of things that they want to do from a branding standpoint. We heard basically every head coach talk about NIL and the revenue share and how every team in this conference is going to be able to match and really in a way kind of maximize what they can give players. So they're out in front of that. And and also the other thing is he called this the deepest conference in America. And it's hard to argue against that because from a parity standpoint, from a competitive standpoint, sure, they might not have a number of college football playoff candidates, but I think week in and week out, Emily, on Saturdays, we're, we're going to be tuning in and watching Big 12 football. And, and I think from an entertainment value, that's going to carry a lot of weight. So I'm really excited to see what they're able to do. They continue to expand and push the boundaries in a way they, they, they still want to kind of keep pedal to the metal. And, and, you know, he did say that they need to be at the forefront of things and they need to be con to continue to be bold. So that's that's exactly what they're going to try to do. Thank <laughs> you.